So we're here today with Ashley Dowdy, she's a physician assistant, that's gonna to talk to us about breast cancer. So Ashley, I know, we all know that mammograms are needed. Right. They're very preventative, they help us know what's going on with our bodies. But what happens, because I think most times people think about when they get a mammogram, oh my God, I don't know what to do if, if they find something wrong. Right. What's the one thing happens like when, when, when we get an abnormal result? So one thing that I think is really important for women to know is that just because you get a call back that a screening mammogram was abnormal, it doesn't mean that there's something definitely wrong. So sometimes when you come back for more imaging, all we need is a few more pictures either with mammogram or ultrasound just to prove that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. So sometimes even though you have an abnormal screening mammogram, ultimately the final result may be totally normal. Um, additionally, sometimes we see something that they'll call probably benign. Probably benign can sound very scary but yes, <laughs> by, yes very scary um, but by definition that means that it's a less than two percent chance that anything bad's going on so we're 98 percent certain it's not cancer but instead of waiting a year to look at something again we might recommend a six-month follow-up I always say it's best to get in head of anything yes, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, and then sometimes ultimately after the additional imaging they may very well recommend a biopsy but important to know that even if a biopsy is recommended um, about 85 percent of the biopsies that we do come back benign so I want patients to understand that additional imaging even biopsies does not always mean that there's a breast cancer diagnosis we're really proud here at West there was actually a study performed by Rabble Health that showed that West Cancer Center has a better than average um, time from mammogram to biopsy yes. so we know that it can be very very stressful to wait you know the waiting is very stressful so I'm really proud that we can kind of move that along oh, yeah, as fast as turnaround. possible right sure. no one sits at home and just biting your nails and feeling like, oh my God, oh my God, right. you guys are really good about following up yes, and getting back in exactly. here to see what's going on. Yes, ma'am. So I know we think about lapectomy and mastectomy, and we hear those big, big words like mm -hmm. that that can be pretty scary. Kind of explain to the audience just what that means exactly. Sure, sure. So once we find out that someone has a breast cancer, you know, there's a variety of things that we have to do to kind of do some better planning, you know, figure out what treatment is best for each individual patient. From a surgical perspective, in general, the, you know, treatment, the surgical treatment for breast cancer is either a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, like you said. Lumpectomy means that we're saving the breast, but just removing the cancer, removing the tumor from the breast. You know, oftentimes we hear about lumpectomy or mastectomy, and we automatically think, oh my God, like something's truly wrong, but kind of explain to the audience the difference and what that really means and sure. the care that you receive yeah. from it. So when we talk about treatment for breast cancer and talking about a surgical perspective, we either save the breast or we remove the breast. Saving the breast or breast conserving surgery is a lumpectomy where we go in and we remove the tumor with a little bit of healthy, healthy tissue behind it, around it, um, but we're able to, you know, preserve the breast. Whereas so there's no reconstructive or anything. It's typically not with necessary that, yeah. with a lumpectomy. That's okay, correct. Okay. Um, most, so that's not most a bad of, thing. Right? Yeah. You most stop being of the afraid time. Of that word. It's yes, not a bad exactly. Thing. So most of the time, um, the you know patient is able to have the cancer removed while also maintaining a satisfactory cosmetic outcome. Um, with a mastectomy, that does mean that we're removing the breast. Um, and a lot of people have the misconception that, you know, more surgery is better, um, and that's not always the case. So really, you know, all the studies have shown that um, there is no survival advantage to a mastectomy over a lumpectomy. So, so are you saying that some women like to get that done just by removing it, thinking they remove the whole cancer issue, if it's genetic or anything like that. Right, so you know, we try to save the breast whenever we can because mm -hmm. there is not a survival advantage. Um, so we don't save anyone's life by removing their breast, but there are occasions where mastectomy might still be recommended. So a lot of patients might say, well, if there's no survival advantage, right. why would you <laughs> do <laughs> it, right? Why would you remove the breast? So exactly. there's a few different reasons why. So number one would be if there are multiple tumors in the breast, we wouldn't really do multiple lumpectomies. Yeah, so we would remove much. the breast. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if there's a tumor maybe right behind the nipple in the central portion of the breast, we would remove the breast if we have to remove the central portion of the breast. Um, just cosmetically might be a mm -hmm. better cosmetic outcome that way. And I also think it's so important when we talk about things like that is knowing our family history. How mm -hmm. important does that play a role? Yeah, so family history is certainly very important. Um, and it used to be that genetic testing, you had to meet certain criteria. But now the American Society of Breast Surgeons 
Guidelines actually recommends that any woman who has breast cancer should be offered genetic testing even if they don't have a family history of breast cancer. Do you find that that eliminates something in the future or why should we yeah, that? Yeah, so um, very helpful for you know the patient's family. So occasionally you know we'll have someone who even though they don't have a family history mm -hmm. if they get testing and we find that they have a genetic mutation it may not necessarily change their treatment plan all the time mm -hmm. um, especially if it's an older woman but it can be really important for their children so if they have an unaffected daughter who ends up being found to have a genetic mutation we're able to kind of get that patient into our high-risk clinic and start doing high-risk screening and really follow them a lot more closely than we would have otherwise. The surgery, what's kind of the next steps that happens here at sure. the clinic at Midwest? Yeah, so um, the treatment of breast cancer is certainly a multidisciplinary approach, so surgery is part of it, but we also have patients see a medical oncologist who talks about endocrine therapy, which is medication by mouth, or some patients need chemotherapy, um, radiation therapy is also something that can be involved. So the timing of all of those things is really um, dependent on the different features of the cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, every breast cancer is a little bit different, um, but many times following surgery, a patient may or may not need any of those things, radiation, chemo, endocrine therapy. Sometimes those things are actually given before uh, surgery as say, well. I was, I didn't, I, I was, I was yeah. thinking that when you mm -hmm. said that, because yeah. I thought it was at the beginning, but you right. get it at the backside yeah. as well. So it kind of depends. You know, there are certain cancers that if we can give them treatment up front and shrink that tumor down, someone who maybe wasn't a candidate for a lumpectomy at the beginning, if we can treat them first and get that tumor to shrink, then they might be able to actually have a lumpectomy when it comes time for surgery. So to my ladies out there, as you guys know, February is Prevention Month, and I want you guys to know to please, please get your mammogram. You know what? Do it on your birthday. Grab your girlfriends. Come on out. You can come out to the Marcus West Comprehensive Breast Center and get it done. Get your screening done right here. And here's two healthy breasts. Be right back.